Beginning with M. <laughs> Riley, you. What are we going to see in the final? Uh, Miracles 1.0 against Miracles 2.0. One, the old school player piloting the old school version of Miracles, and the other one, an unknown player running a really cool take on Miracles. The Minty Monastery Mentor Miracles. Yes, something like that. Okay, so we've got Claudio Bernani in uh, how, how many Grand Prix top eights does he uh, have? This is the first, first one. Yeah, okay, first number one. one. Great job by him. Um, up against Ol Olivier Ruel. Ru Ruel. That sounds familiar to me. How many top eights does he have? Um, I think this is 28. 28. We believe it's his 10th final. Oh, jeez. Uh, four, yeah. four or five wins, five I Five wins, five I believe. Wins. Um, yes, five Pro Tour top eights. He is, of course, in the Hall of Fame, as is his brother, Antoine, not here this weekend. Uh, decided to leave a slot free in the final <laughs> for somebody. Uh, so it's miracles on miracles. There are some differences in the deck. Monastery Mental, we've already mentioned, and that's potentially very interesting uh, as we go into it. But plenty to come. You'll see Riley Knight and Moraine Leibert for game two. But we're going to walk you through the first of a potential three. It's time for the final of Grand Prix Lille 2015. Hello everyone, we have had Miraculous and now it is time for Miracu More because it is Olivier Ruel on the left of your screen in his 28th Grand Prix Top 8 in the final against Claudio Bonanni of Italy. It is Miracles all the way, Miracles 2.0 if you prefer uh, for Bonanni on the right of screen. Yep, uh, Miracles 2.0 is, uh, for those who are not familiar with it, we call the deck uh, because of it's a new take on the traditional uh, Miracles deck that we've been seeing. Uh, he doesn't run any Jaces, he doesn't run any Treat the Angels or Vendillion Clicks in main deck. He's relying on four Monastery Mentors as his prime win condition. So there's the battlefield, and that bit in the middle Matei, I'm not sure how much use we're going to get out of that, traditionally known as the red zone, and traditionally known for that space where all the creatures do all their attacking and blocking. Uh, well, I expect the, the half belonging to Claudio, that might see some play. The half of Olivier, I'm skeptical. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe just once when he swings with his angel tokens. Right. So uh, you're getting a look at uh, Banani's hand, uh, lots of brainstorm action there, and we're going to get underway. Uh, with Ponder on turn one. Force of Will, you see there. And another Ponder. And what's he going to do with those three? Yeah, counterbalance, I think, is one of the uh, mm -hmm. the other cards. Uh, and maybe being able to land a very quick counterbalance could prove uh, very key for Claudio Bonani. Talking of counterbalance, the other half of that combo is already in play on Olivier Ruel's side of the board. That is Sensei's Divining Top. Uh, top and counterbalance between them provide what we call a soft lock. Um, Matei, why don't you just tell people what we mean by soft lock? Uh, means that uh, usually a hard lock means that the opponent is not able to do anything. Like can cast a spell or can cast a spell and then they would counter something like that. As we see a counterbalance, so both players having one side of the soft lock, which means that uh, by um, you know, playing around with the cards on top of your library thanks to Sensei's Divine Top, you can counter a fair amount of spells that your opponent is trying to throw at you. Counterbalance in play uh, for Banani. There's the other half because you reveal if it's the same converted mana cost, it will get countered. And Banani just has a go at that. Now, it, what we're hoping to see for both these players is to reach the point where they're not just guessing what's on top of their library and just waiting to find out along with the rest of us, uh, but they have set up what is there. That's the joy of the senses divining top as Ruel makes a backup copy. Here's Brainstorm, and uh, as we know, Banani began with three Brainstorm in hand, so plenty of card draw, plenty of card selection. The trophy waiting on the right of screen. Could be a while before we hand it to someone because even 2-0 can take a while in the Miracles pseudo mirror i mean these decks are not the same and as we go through um we will get a little more sense 
of just how they do differ. Um, no doubt, though, that Monastery Mentor, four copies in Banani's Miracles list, zero copies in Ruel, uh, and that is very much uh, a big moment. And that is a big moment because here is Sensi's Divining Top, Claudia Banani looking to complete the two-card combo, if you will. And uh, Olivia Ruel says, I can't allow that to happen. I'm going to have to force of will pitching Counterspell. Yeah, but Claudio Bonani not only has a force of will of his own, he also has a daze, which is great counter here, and he should be able to resolve his lock with a mana up as well, and already, real, already in tough shape. Oh, oh, this is terrible for Ruel fans, my word. As you're looking at a three-card hand that is two swords to plowshares and a planes. Now, obviously, hands can change a lot and quite quickly. Uh, yeah, but uh, Claudio Bonani is in a uh, great shape. Even though he has triple Volcanic Island at his disposal and he has plenty of white cards, uh, having the, the lock assembled means that your opponent will be hard-pressed to uh, even improve his hands through things like Ponder or Brainstorm. Uh, but at least Olivia has the top of his own to at least start drawing some lands and maybe hope for some good endgame in, in something like Entreat the Angels, for example, or Jace. So Ruel continues uh, to dig though not in the sense of through time, which is a card that both these players uh, do have access to. Hmm. If uh, Claudio Munani can juggle uh, a one and two casting cost card on, top card on top of his library, he'll be in great shape. And here we s he will see if, uh, if he can do that. So one, two, three. There's a Brainstorm, a land. And a Snapcaster snap Mage that says no to the counterbalance. Ruel hasn't got a Force of Will on a blue card to do something about that. More bad news for Ruel. Very good news for Claudio Bonani. For those of you uh, keen-eared in the audience, I can tell you that out just beyond our coverage area, there is a huge TV which is being watched by, I would say, predominantly Italian fans which means that when exciting things like counterbalance gets to resolve for Banani, you hear a lot of cheering, except because it's on the stream, you're hearing them watching it slightly later than you're hearing <laughs> things, seeing things actually happen uh, through our microphone. So if you hear weird cheering, just think, yeah, I'd have been happy about that 12 seconds ago, <laughs> or whichever way around the, the time goes. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, but I, I love this. The Italians are the... The community that always brings a lot of people to all the GPs, and they hold together and really root for the for the players in the top eight, unlike almost any other nation in Europe, which is right. great to see. Yes, it isn't about who you travel with. You just go, I don't know you, but I do know that you're Italian, and therefore I want you to win. Here is an argument that Olivier Ruel may be able to win. Huh. <laughs> no. Because Jace the Mind Sculptor does tend to get round a sense he's divining top and counterbalance, uh, lock because well what do you have that costs four uh in uh, in uh, claudio bonani's deck nothing there's no it is literally clear it right. is it is it's one of the few casting cards where there's nothing on four however he has the dazes so in this early game he can uh, counter it effectively and while having a countertop uh, uh lock already he can also use his force of wills much more effectively than olivier well can right and it looks like he He's in great shape. He can, he's able to replay his lands. The only thing he's missing is a white source of mana. And yeah, he'll get there eventually. Yeah, this is just terrific for uh, Banani. And any time in a control mirror, essentially, that you're tapping out with four mana for mm. a spell, that's so far from the comfort zone you want to be in. Uh, but that's what Olivier Rouault was dealt with. He's sitting there with two, with two swords to plowshares, which, as we know, are not quite worthless because Monastery Mentor can come down at some point, but even if he starts aiming it at a Monastery Mentor or a Snapcaster Mage, for example, well, there's a very good chance that the counterbalance snap uh, Sensi's Divining Top lock is going to prevail in that. So, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're just churning through the, uh, the top three cards of this library, trying to find something. Uh, the bad thing for Olivier is the fact... He has double swords to plowshares in his hand, which seems like, oh, so he can easily answer Monastery Mentor. But with the countertop uh, yeah. uh, assembled, it's going to be very hard. And uh, Claudio Bonanno should be able to take this game if he ever draws the white source uh, for his Monastery Mentor. And actually trying to go for a Snapcaster here on the Brainstorm. 
Yeah, and it's it's hard to explain to newer players that the 1919 that you're looking at on the life total is so far from the most important thing that is on screen right now. Um, it is it is almost incalculable. If you imagine a limited game where you're on 20, your opponent's on one, and you've got three creatures on board, that's the kind of lead right now that mm. Claudio Banani yeah. has in this game. There's the source of pouches on the Snapcast Mage with Brainstorm out resolve. It's going to counter uh, the source with, uh, with, uh, with the top card being sorts of his own, but counterbalance. Make sure that goes away. And now the Brainstorm should resolve. Get some fresh cards into Claudio Bonani's hand. And what you almost, in, in the nicest way, stumbled over there, <laughs> you almost said the one mana counter spell swords to plowshares. And that makes you realize quite what counterbalance and senses divided top is doing. It's just relentless. Uh, and uh, Ruel can be as good as he likes. And but here's the key card for Claudio Bonani. Finally, a white source of mana. The Voice Strength can be cracked for Tundra. And after he untaps, he might, he'll probably go for Monastery Mentor with double Force of Will backup as well. I don't think there will be much that Olivier Ruel can do, especially with uh, a one casting cost card on top of uh, Claudio's library. I'm going to raise the specter of something really terrible for people at home. Okay. If you're Olivier Ruel sitting there knowing, for the sake of argument, that you're going to lose game one, do you make Claudio Banani play every turn between now and when he kills Olivier Ruel with something? Because 10 minutes' time, that's Claudio Banani 10 minutes closer to hitting the wall that we've all seen even the most experienced Magic players hit at the end of a long GP weekend. Do you sit there and go, I congratulate you on being 1-0 up, in 25 minutes time um in a way yes it's there's always some value to be gained to see how your opponent uh, uh, is playing the match and uh o olivier Royal is also no stranger to mistakes he said himself in semi-finals he forgot some counterbalance triggers it could happen we've seen it today uh we've seen it yesterday and uh yeah it just can happen here swords to plowshares reach out aim for tiago chan the uh, artwork on snapcaster mage <laughs> Look how happy he is. Where I was like, oh yeah, my swords to plowshares got the job done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Finally, I resolved something. Yeah. Fi finally, we're just back to the soft lock. Yeah. <laughs> you can see uh, Claudio actually did not even hesitate there. He, he didn't even want to reveal to counter the swords to plowshares, and he baited Olivia into uh, using the brainstorm there. Uh, which got countered with the Source of Plowshares <laughs> on top, casually. <laughs> so the, the victory was short-lived for Olivier Ruel there. <laughs> as, as the players are clapping, uh, just yes. as they, they see that. That's what they've just seen. Yeah. There's the Monastery Mentor. And now, actually, in, in a slightly strange way, because normally you expect the sort of blue-white control decks to have some giant flyer uh, to get the job done and take six or seven-point life chunks out. That isn't how this deck works, but it does actually end the game pretty quickly. Mm. Um, from here, Olivier's 15 points of life um, are actually going to, um, well, they're going to diminish quite rapidly as Ruel just casually turns a graveyard into an exile zone uh, and says, how about a dig through time? I would love to s have a player cam just for Olivier Ruel. Just like the way he's, uh, yep, so how about his dig through time? You ha didn't let me resolve that, anything else, uh, but... Just dropped it on the table yeah. like it never mattered. Yeah. So are you going to counter that as well? <laughs> Look at that. That's such an absurd hand. <laughs> yeah, double Brain force of brainstorm, will. <laughs> double force of will, counter spell and counterbalance. Plus the lock in play. Plus monastery mentor in play. Plus you're at 20. Plus your opponent has almost no cards. And just a sense he's dividing top. Do you know what? I think I could win this game from the seat on the right. Whoa, that's a tall order. Do you think? <laughs> I know I'm, I'm feeling pretty bullish if I'm in seat number two. Yeah, I, th I think you would have this. In I bag. think I got this. Yeah. My word. What a beating. <laughs> what are you trying? But we were talking off air just before we started. We said, you know, let, let's come up with some scenarios for how these games might play out because there may be a lot going on in the early game that's just jockeying for position. Uh, and, and you said to me, of course, one of them could just basically go, here's a top, here's a counterbalance. Oh, look at that. That'll be the soft lock then. And the other guy's not coming back from that. Yeah, but this was um, 
uh, exacerbated by the fact that Claudio Bonani uh, had two early dazes, which he managed to not only assemble the lock but protect it very nicely against what Olivier Will was trying to do. So uh, you know, there's there's more to that than just you know play one card, play the second card. It's a lot of the other cards that are uh, that are there. In we go, life points down, Ruel at 12. Very much going through the motions now. Hmm. As he was from uh, turn four onwards. <laughs> uh, I think from the moment that he didn't resolve his Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Right, which he knew he wasn't going to realistically. I mean, the odds were that he wouldn't. Yeah, you would. Sure. You would never choose to go for a naked Jace, as it were, with, you know, no no mana backup, no counter spell backup, no another play backup, just kind of have Jace. He's trying for counterbalance. Nope. Mm, uh, Claudio Bonani having none of that. Yeah. And all that's really left in this game is for the Monastery Mentor to do what it does, which is unpack a bit of an army. Or it may not even bother now. Yeah, do you see the biggest difference in this uh, matchup is the Monastery Mentor that one version has. It's being used as a kill condition now, but I think the game was decided by the usual Sensei Divine Counterbalance core that has not left this archetype ever. And there's a swing in uh, with the creatures again, but Olivier is going to try maybe for another source of flowers or maybe just looking at the top three cards with top. He's thinking. In his 10th GP final, casually. Looks like there's a little judge discussion coming in there. I see a red shirt, an arm and a red shirt. That'll be a Kim Warren. A Kim Warren. I do believe that's our head judge, Kim Warren, just uh, taking a little peek there. Okay, maybe there was some problem with the top card library, uh, but it looks to be looks to be handled. It probably f fell down from the top of his library as uh, Claudio Bonani was attacking. That's what it looked like. Permanents are being swept up here in game one, and there's some applause uh, from the people who are watching in the actual feature match area. And shortly, I give you my word, you're going to hear some more applause, which are all the Italians watching on the time delay across the hall. I give it about another mm, four or five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Cue the Italian applause. Nah. Oh. This, the delay is They haven't seen it yet. No, they haven't. They but still haven't I'm seen sure it. I'm sure they'll hear it, though. <laughs> uh, we'll see how the, these players sideboard, though, <laughs> as they move on to game two. We will indeed. Uh, so, Olivier Ruel, he's got two Containment Priest, two Ether Sworn Canonist, two Is It Staticaster, two Monastery Mentor, which turned out to be quite good, one Pyroblast, two Flusterstorm, one Venser Shaper Savant, one Elspeth Knight Errant, one Council's Judgment, and one Wear Tear. And here to talk you through those 15 cards for Olivier Everywell is none other than Mr. Moraine Leibert. Here he is. So we're looking at a Miracle Mirror, but it's not the exact mirror, because uh, of course uh, Bonani has the four Monastery Mentor. In a normal Miracle Mirror, you would be looking at cybering out at least a couple of swords to plowshares, but I'm not sure you want to do that against a deck with four Monastery Mentor. Now the cards you want to bring in are your own Mentors. I see like these should be an inclusion. I do like the Pyroblast as well to be bringing in. Uh, maybe the Elspeth Knight Aaron just as another powerful Planeswalker C could also bring in the Flusterstorm. And the Wear and Tear should probably come in as well as the, your only answer to a counterbalance on the side of Claudio Bonani however with Miracles 2.0 great to be back in the booth and discussing this deck very excited about it indeed we have one red elemental blast a disenchant wear and tear as well EE -E, engineered explosives finds its way into the sideboard surgical extraction rest in peace pyroclasm blood moon and a singleton jace and rounding out the 15 cards on the side of Bonani are two Flusterstorm, two Vendillion Click, and two 
either sworn canonist. You've already very comp comprehensively dealt with Oliver Olivier Ruel's sideboard, but uh, give us the lowdown. Give us the skinny for the Italian bloke we see on our screen. Now, I like uh, Chris uh, Claudio's sideboard a little bit better, mainly because he's got Vendillion Click. Vendillion Click could be uh, very crucial in this fight. Uh, he also has a Red Elemental Blast, which he could br be bringing in. Uh, might even bring in an extra copy of Jay's the Mind Sculptor. Uh, I like also the Wear and Tear, maybe even the Disenchant. Although, yeah, I guess you bring in both uh, as an answer to Caramel. So although it's not even that sure you bring in these, because sometimes they already have the Sensitive Divining Top when they play the Counterbalance, and then your Wear and Tear or Disenchant are not going to do much either. I guess Disen Disenchant is a little bit better at that point in time because it, it's too mana con converted mana cost is two, so it's harder to counter with counterbalance. Well, I'm sure these guys have got a very good plan as to how they're going to approach this game number two. Banani taking out the first one, of course, in no uncertain terms. And we saw the namesake card of the deck, Miracles 2.0, being powered by the Monastery Mentor. And it was indeed the Mentor that pushed Banani over the line. A a Ruel playing catch-up from the beginning. But, of course, it was those lock pieces, the counterbalance uh, and top uh, combination that we've seen uh, put into practice for so long here with this Miracles deck. But uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this new take on it, Moran. Yeah, the, the Monastery Mentor adds a new dimension to the deck. Uh, it surprisingly, it's the, it's the only creature, and sometimes you would think, yeah, why would you you run a 2-2 as your only creature? But the thing is, uh, Claudio doesn't have to play it on turn 3. He can wait till he can follow it up with a Daze, with a Force of Will, with maybe one uh, Sensei Dividing Top or something like that. And then he already gets some tokens out of it. Your, your opponent kills it with removal. That's fine. You get some value. You can start attacking. And you get a faster clock, which sometimes is a problem with Miracles. I mean, we had someone end the tournament with 10 wins and 5 draws yeah. with Miracles. Yeah, this is a real problem for the deck. And I think Monastery Mentor not only uh, fights on a, on a legitimate gameplay axis, but also on a logistical one. When you're relying on the one or the two copies of Entreat the Angels in your in your deck to actually put the game out of reach for your opponent once and for all, if you can slam down a Monastery Mentor and win maybe after th two or three attacks, attack steps, you're in much better shape. Yep. You're going to be beating the clock nine times out of ten. Yep. And you also force your opponent to, to keep all of his uh, Swords to Blow shares, which he might not want to do, or at least a couple of Swords to Blow shares and Terminus. Uh, which he should not, would he, which he would not do against the normal version of uh, miracles. Uh, yeah, it's also c uh, yeah. Your opponents are going to be hard pressed to find the exact right balance. They're going to have to make a very, uh, a very tough decision as to how they want to uh, approach the uh, the balance between being proactive and reactive in this game. And Monastery Mentor definitely shakes up the uh, the, the the mirror. It shakes up the way that other control decks and other uh, indeed uh, decks of all stripes are going to approach mir uh, uh, miracles moving forward. Yeah, on the other hand, Ruel did have the two Vendillion Click main deck. Now, after Cyber, they're going to ha both have two, of course, uh, but Ruel had the main deck. He did not get there anyway. Uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor is a card. Ruel had main deck. Now, uh, Claudio might be bringing his own copy. Uh, the Entreaty Angels is not the best card, but could be the finisher uh, if needed. So Claudio Banani, one game away, one final W away from a GP championship. Ruel, on the other hand, has to dig deep and find two and conjure two victories here. And of course, he's no stranger to the top tables at the G at, uh, GPs. This is his 28th GP top eight, 28 of them. And he's won five of them. So he's hungry for a sixth. I know that much. Been practicing very hard, preparing for this event for two, uh, for three weeks leading up to uh, this uh, GP Lil here. So he's not mucking around. And these players uh, get ready with their seven cards for what could be the last game of the tournament. Fans of Olivier Ruel, who has been around for a very long time, of course, a French Hall of Fame and one of the old guard of Magic players, will be hoping the tournament goes on for at least two more. But Claudio Banani and his enormous cheer squad that are uh, lining the halls here at uh, GP Lille will certainly be hoping for a swift end to this game. So we will see how things shake out. We're going to begin with Sensei's Divining Top. A good start. Yep. And uh, Claudio could force a fill there, but he opts not to. He knows there's other battles he needs to fight, and m he might even have his own Sensei's Divining Top. Scalding Tarn for Banani. Fetches basic island, so both of these players uh, with an island in play at the at turn one. Now, of course, uh, Olivier Ruel does have two copies of Wasteland, uh, so Bonani has to be a little bit more careful with his lands, whereas Olivier Ruel doesn't have to 
be careful there's no copies of wasteland in Bonani's deck no, he can ride roughshod as he likes with his lands and we're seeing ponder here for the turn one play for Bonani and he ships it back so the opening turns of these games, crucial in setting up how the, uh, the later texture of the game will be approached by these players. We often see turns one, two, and three lasting for quite a while here, but Olivia Ruel is not mucking around. Look at this. We have turn one, Sensei's Divining Top, turn two, Counterbalance. Banani is happy to return the island to his hand to daze that. Daze, another centerpiece of the two Miracles 2.0 deck. This new breed of Miracles deck does rely on daze as an, at a further disruptive element, Moran. Yeah, and Sensei's Divining Top now could... Uh, Olivier, uh, he could f track it and hope to draw Force of Will, uh, hoping to counter that daze, but then he would actually lose it again to another Force of Will. He doesn't find it, so he has to ship it back, and now the Sensei Divining Top is gone. Flooded Strand, the play for Benani. Island still in hand, along with uh, what looks like a Brainstorm, a couple of other cards in there as well, Force of Will amongst them. Olivier Ruel is going to start off with a Ponder for his turn three. Three cards off the top. And his hand looking a little gaseous at the moment. Two tops and a pyroblast amongst the, uh, the cards in his grip. Vents the shape of Savant there. A little Ru Ruel tearing at the heartstrings of many uh, diehard blue mages around the world with his uh, flash 2 2 there. Happy enough to keep those cards and draw. Nani allowing the Sensei's Divining Top to resolve. And Ruel with Dig through time. Vence the Shape of Savon. Sensei's Divining Top and a Pyroblast in hand. But it's Banani with a Sensei's Divining Top of his own. Yeah, and now the game is going to go go quite long unless someone can uh, quickly find a counterbalance to, to lock it up. Uh, both players have card selection. I think uh, Claudio is a little bit better gear because he does already have some advantage. I, has, I think he has got more cards in hand. Uh, he's got five and he's drawing one because he was on the draw of course. No, he's got six plus drawing one but he's also down a land so it seems to be co uh, even. Morel drawing another card off his top here and it's Snapcaster Mage. And we're going to see perhaps a Ponder flashback. See if Banani has anything to say about this. Consults the grip and he could Pyroblast here. I mean, he, he, he needs to answer the Snapcaster Mage and Olivier Ruel is getting some advantage of the Ponder. It seems like he doesn't think it's worth it. He's choosing his battles wisely. Yeah, Banani really is picking his battles here, hoping to, uh, to leverage the m absolute maximum value out of the cards in hand. And choosing not to fight over the Snapcaster Mage, or indeed the Ponder that came down with it. So Ponder flashback, that'll hit the Exile Zone rather than the Library there. Rather than the Graveyard, I should say. There we go. All fixed up. And it's a Sensei's Divining Top once again. Another island for Banani. And now we, uh, we enter into this phase where not a lot of action is going on. Players sculpting their hands and making sure that they're going to approach the game with uh, the greatest advantage they can muster. But it is Ruel with uh, a very... Slow, but all the same, existent clock. Yeah, 10 attacks. Might even be a 9 with another fetch. And there's not a lot of uh, sword supplosures left after sideboarding in the Miracles Mirror. No, and if there were, I certainly would favor uh, Ruel in having many more in his deck due to the threat of Monastery Mentor. Ruel could even bounce his own Snapcaster Mage with Venser. 
just to get another activation out of it. That's a hot play. Smoking hot. Smoking hot plays. Very well, fiddling around with the top of his library, and here's Flooded Strand. Yeah, he's aggressively using his top to make sure he, he puts in a uh, land to play every turn. Because it, it, this is still a control mirror, after all, and there you want to have as many lands in play as possible. You also want to make sure your opponent, of course, doesn't resolve a problematic card like Monastery Mentor. So the old versus the new in the final of GP Lil. Miracle in the hands of the old school rule versus Miracles 2.0. The young, fresh blood of Claudio Banani here shaking up the format with Mir Monastery Mentor in his Miracles list. And it's fascinating to see these two decks go at each other. I know many, uh, many older members of the Magic community are absolutely thrilled to see Olivia Ruel uh, doing very well at a tournament. The brief uh, chats I've had with people uh, talking about the fact that Ruel is, turns up at one tournament a year and is uh, odds-on to win the thing as well. Banani, though, here come with uh, flush with support. Absolute, uh, absolute uh, Italian army here, it must be said. Standing behind the youngster on the, on the right. The relative youngster, I should say. And now Ruel is going to draw. In comes the Snapcaster Mage. Getting it done. Two damage a turn. And we see Ponder here from Olivier Ruel. So once again, having a check-in with the top of his library and uh, given the opportunity to shuffle if he likes as well. Considering his options here. And he's going to draw. And it's a brainstorm off the top here. Deployed immediately by Ruel. One, two, and three cards. So he gets a look at the third card on the bottom there. Seems to have immediately put it back, however. And it looks like Ponder is also going to meet the top of his library. And a fetch land has been found too. His polluted delta. And it's back to Banani. End of turn, Vendillion click here. The Flash 3-1 Flying Fairy Wizard is going to enter the party. Or at least attempt to. We'll see if Ruel has anything to say about it here. Vendillion click providing aggressive and disruptive elements in these blue decks. A highly worthy inclusion. Yeah, uh, and a quicker clock than Snapcaster Mage. Actually quite important uh, to fight over it. Uh, it seems like Pyroblast is just going to counter it. Uh, Claudio Bonani not hitting the button on that Force of Will yet. He really wants maybe to resolve a big mentor and hope to then get there. Away goes Polluted Delta. We're still in uh, Ruel's end step here. So he's wanting to shuffle away those problematic cards on top of his library. And away they go. Back to Banani here, who untaps. And it's counterbalance here for the Italian. And this was the fight he was waiting for. Now he will fire an all silent mode. Firing on all cylinders will be of s the, uh, the ultimate objective of, uh, of Banani, absolutely. But Ruel with a, a stumbling block or two to put in the way of the Italian in seeking to do that. He's got dig through time, and I think we're going to see that deployed here. Force of Will also in hand. 
But Ruel's graveyard uh, hits the exile zone. In addition to the two mana that was used to pay for the upfront side of the card. Dig through time, a card I know, Moraine, that you have some opinions on in terms of its effect on the Legacy uh, metagame. Well, we're seeing two Miracle decks in the finals. We did have a uh, couple of Aggro Loam decks and uh, a land deck in the top eight, so yeah, it might. I still think it's worth banning because there's just too much blue these days. Mm. You cannot play anymore. Well, you're not if you want to win, you're not supposed to play decks like Nick Fit. Whereas before Dick Through Time, you could still do that. I think it's a little bit too good. And I, this is a, a strange game because there's not been that many threats. I mean, uh, Olivia Roll started off with a turn two counterbalance, which met a daze. Uh, there's very few threats being played, but th the one that is going to resolve now is just going to be very crucial here. If, if uh, Claudio gets that, that, uh, that counterbalance top lock, he has been keeping a hold of that Pyroblast for a very long time knowing that this is the fight he wanted to win, that this is the, the one he where he needs as much counter as possible. But we do see that Olivier Rill actually has a Council's Judgment on top uh, to get rid of the combo, unless there is a 3 mana card, which there are not many of. No, certainly not too many floating around Miracles lists, but of course Monastery Mentor fleshes out the 3 drop slot a lot more than these old uh, these Miracle lists. Miracle 2.0 packing a lot more heat at the 3, li at the three drop slot. And it's going to be Force of Will here deployed. So Ruel fighting hard for this dig through time. But tapped out and hellbent once this Force of Will is put on the stack. Banani certainly in the driving seat as far as uh, this stack interaction goes. As even if the Force of Will resolves, Ruel has to find Force Blue card. Spin the top, says Banani. Banani might be looking for a daze. That would be super brutal. He does have still he still have th has the force of his own, so he can certainly counter. But this means that the next spell is going to resolve, especially especially now that he's used the one mana for Sensei's Divining Top. I mean, unless he's telegraphing the the Council of Judgment and blindly put a, a three mana on top. He might be a, a Monastery Mentor, because that is actually the card he wants to draw next. Yeah, absolutely. His In comes the Snapcaster Mage for two. It's another reason why the, the Monastery Mentor deck is a little bit better in this matchup, because you have the, the three drops to, to put on top with the Counterbalance. Council's Judgment the play here for Olivier Ruel. So once again, pick something and it goes away. The uh, the cliff notes of the uh, of the council's judgment. A rather complicated interaction in many multiplayer games, but very very straightforward when it comes to traditional constructed. So that's going to take care of the counterbalance. It a very good top three cards there: uh, pyroblast, counterspell, and monastery mentor. Ruel looking to join in on that Monastery Mentor party. Because he know that heat don't stop. But it looks like Banani has certainly got uh, the advantage when it comes to cards in hand. Counterbalance number two coming down here. And Ruel, with no cards in hand, relying on his lone Snapcaster and, of course, the top that you're seeing activated here. And it's Red Elemental Blast off the top. We're going to see Banani spin the top as well. And I think somewhere along the line, Olivia Ruel tapped uh, one too many mana. Flusterstorm here. No, what he did is he used his is top to look at the top three in response draw a card to draw the pyroblast and now he's still going to activate the top activation i did think that he tapped the both of the volcanic islands and i wasn't sure where the sensei's uh, divining top activation was coming in but it seems to be right here right now yeah now the counterbalance is in play 
but uh, Claudio is going to be at 9, and Olivier Ruel is actually going to play a, a Monastery Mentor to follow that up. So Ruel still having a good old think about how he wants to deal with the top three cards of his library. This game poised on a knife's edge here. In comes the Snapcaster Mage at a very, at a blistering pace. And Monastery Mentor joined the party as well. Olivier Ruel knows exactly what's up when it comes to this powerful card from Fate Reforged. And giving Banani a taste of his own medicine here. Four mana. And it's Monastery Mentor and a Sensei's Divining Top. While taking advantage of the fact that Ruel is out of action. So here you have it. The Monastery Mentor is going head to head. And immediately Banani cashing in the advantage with the... Uh, a 1-1 one, one prowess token, thanks to the Sensei's Divining Top. This game's looking good. And there it is, a concession from Oliver Ruel. Congratulations to our champion at GP Lil. A legacy legend has been born, Claudio Banani. Look at his face. He cannot believe it. Commiserations and congratulations to the Pro Tour Hall of Famer, Olivia Ruel, coming all the way to the finals, but ultimately being crushed once Claudio Banani with Miracles 2.0 slams the mentor into play what a tournament we've seen Marianne Liber and it has all come down to Monastery Mentor yeah uh, and very well played I mean he chose his battles he he fought of, over the counterbalance he lost the first one to the council judgment had the second one and then knew it was all locked up once he got the combo very well played by Claudio Bonani really he must be he must be quite experienced when, he c when it comes to legacy. Absolutely. The old meets the new. We've seen Mir Miracles 2.0 combining the counter top lock in addition to a very aggressive clock with Monastery Mentor. And unfortunately for fans of Olivia Ruel, a little bit behind the times here. Old school Ruel going down in the finals 0-2. And look at Claudio Bonani, well supported by the Italian mob standing on the other side of the barriers. They've been cheering him on all the way through the finals and they have a lot to smile about here as we bring it back to the booth one final time here riley knight alongside marine Liber. so great to have your company throughout this weekend it is over once and for all our legacy gp has come to an end a thrilling conclusion for you all and thanks so much for being a part of our legacy weekend it's been fantastic to showcase this wonderful format to the rest of the world but once again monastery mentor having the final say i'm really glad people are catching up on this card you, you love this right this i absolutely is, love this card this monastery mentor it's taken some time before it got into legacy i mean young pyromancer took his time as well it, it's what usually happens in legacy mm. actually new cards they don't like there's not that many legacy tournaments so people really pick their their tournament where they want to innovate he banani he he went bananas this tournament he did he, absolutely he, and he, he has been mm, rewarded in spades monastery mentor in in miracles very good wow yeah Mon i think uh, miracles 2.0 moving forward will be the gold standard for mi uh, miracles i'm quite happy to call that shot in the dark but i think the days of entreat the angels are coming to a close because this really it, 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 it rectifies an enormous flaw of the deck which was the the time problem and i can tell you now certainly banani has benefited from a, a, a very good win record finishing top of the swiss because he didn't time out we yep. didn't see him go 10 0 and 5 like <laughs> other miracles players he has come to play ball and he's got it done yep and uh, he's about to make his way into the boot uh, let's let's ask him what uh what he thinks about his monastery mentor. Absolutely right. Marine stepping out. Thanks once again for your company throughout the weekend. But I would like to welcome very warmly Claudio Bernani, my friend. Congratulations. Whack these ones on. We're going to have a chat about your weekend, my man. I tell you what, we've been, uh, we've been following the story of the Miracles yep. deck throughout the weekend. And Monastery Mentor, it has all come down to Miracles 2.0 with this latest innovation. Yeah. Um, I just uh, pick up the deck uh, since uh, um, one month. Uh, and uh, I bring, uh, brought it uh, to a tournament uh, in Italy. Uh, we were something like uh, 100, mm. uh, and I won the tournament. It was a GP trial for uh, the for Lille, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, <laughs> "What? <are laughs> yeah, uh, yeah." I never played Miracle uh, before. Uh, just uh, s some uh, games uh, online, you know. Uh, and um, uh, looks uh, very strong. 
So uh, I choose that deck because for me um, was uh, unexpected for this event maybe. Uh, that's all. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think you've done really well. We've talked about the way that Monastery Mentor has shaken things up. Miracles 2.0, you've really put a new deck on the map. What does it mean to you to win a GP with an innovative deck that is presenting something new to a slow format like Legacy? Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's not completely new uh, because uh, the he, um, another uh, kind uh, was near the same mm. uh, uh, at GP Kyoto uh, achieved um, top uh, two uh, he finished uh, but uh, he had um, uh, Stoneforge Mystic and uh, Battle School and all that stuff uh, and I made some changes uh, like Snapcaster Mage uh, which is uh, for me is pretty good in that kind of deck uh, you know uh, when you open hand uh, with uh, uh, some miracle I, I don't really like so uh, I cut uh, one terminus and three T angel, all the stuff, and uh, I saw I put in uh, snake custom age. Yeah. Uh, so the deck uh, looks very strong. For Absolutely. Me, and this is a completely unexpected. It is a yeah. it is a streamlined and lean mean fighting machine. <laughs> I think you've done very well putting this deck on the map. Uh, personally, for you winning a GP, we've got legions of fans standing yeah. behind the cameras here. What does it mean to you personally? Is there anyone out there that you uh, would like to say anything <laughs> to? Yeah, I can explain how happy I, I am so uh, I'm glad to have uh, those uh, kind of people all around me uh, well it's the best things I can imagine a dream come true congratulations thank to you, you my man thank stick you. around while we wrap up the coverage weekend okay. once and for all but ladies and gentlemen I'm uh, in the hall and here around the world of course congratulations to Claudio Bonani our champion but that ladies and gentlemen is that we can see the trophy there very happy face right next to it absolutely uh, that is that. I'm sorry to say that all good things do come to an end. But before we go, I'd like to thank everyone who's come together to make this GP such a success. From our champion all the way down to every single one of the several, uh, the huge amount of competitors we have here. Of course, the TOs, the judges, all the staff that have kept things running smoothly. And of course, the coverage team that I've been lucky enough to work with this weekend. Headed up by the inestimable Rich Hagen standing to my left. Thanks so much to him. In addition, Stephen Leeming, Neil Rigby, Marine Leibert, uh, Mar uh, Matej Zadokai, and of course our text writers, Craig, uh, Craig Jones has been with us, and along with Toby Henker. But of course, thanks to you, because you are the people who make this sort of thing possible with your patronage. That is that. We will see you next time here on the European GP Circuit. Thanks for your company, and hear from everyone at GP Lil. Have a good one.